Just for today's topic, like you know, uh, I already said it that we'll be looking at the 2013 budget. I see there are gray areas. What actually led to the drama of last week, Wednesday, uh, and all of that. Let me quickly introduce the guests. Uh, Honorable, well, he's also a comrade. <laughs> What's a comrade? Always a comrade. Honorable comrade Akila that Joseph is joining us for discussions this morning. Uh, he's a member of a uh, house of representatives representing Odo East and Odo West Federal Constituency of Odo State. Uh, comrade Akela is former Secretary General of NUPEN, that's National Union of Petroleum Energy and National Gas Workers. Uh, and as well, Deputy Pres former Deputy President of the Nigerian Labour Congress. Comrade, good to see you. Mm, thank you. All right. okay. I hope Aluta is still continuing. Aluta got to Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you after a long time. So. Yeah, thank you. Right. <laughs> Dr. Ebeka Okengo is joining us for discussions this morning as well. He's a development consultant. Consultant, good to see you, sir. Good to see you, my friend. Right, right, honorable chief, as well. Mm -hmm. least, even if I didn't, didn't call him chief, mm -hmm. you yeah. should add that on your own. Double chief, he <laughs> said. You're welcome. Uh, one of the very few people to be confirmed with two chief thousand titles the same day from two different uh, communities. Honorable Dr. Patrick Chief Ikariale, Patrick Ikariale, member representing SR Central, SR West, and Igwebe in Federal Constituency of Edo State on the platform of the uh, PDP. He is the Chairman House Committee on Power. Very powerful member of the House. Good to see you, right, Honorable. Thank you very much, Benga. You're welcome. Right. Let me start, uh, Dr. Kengi, let me start with the two members. Last Wednesday, we are, Nigerians are used to a situation whereby when the president signs the budget, it's done with so much fanfare. We see members of the National Assembly, we see the president's men and women who are involved in the process, all of them joining him in at least display all of that for Nigerians to see and for the cameras to capture and all of that. We didn't see that this year. Have, have your leaders brief you as to what actually happened that day? Because it's obvious that the president didn't sign the budget in their presence. Well, uh, Benga, I think uh, Nigerians knew the drama that started the preparation, submission, debate, and are passing the bill. We in the National Assembly decided to stand with the people. And to that extent, we asked that budgets should be submitted, proposals should be submitted later September of the previous year. And you knew what went into it before it was submitted. We quickly went into it, we passed it. But there were issues, you know, issue of benchmark and other things, which we thought uh, have been resolved through dialogue and other uh, So we are surprised at what happened in that, that the, oh, the usual fanfare did not follow. So I leave it at that. All right, we had a. Do you make something? Are we trying to make a, a mountain out of a mole here? Uh, in the sense that we didn't see the actual signing ceremony captured by TV lens, camera lenses and all of that, at least for Nigerians to see, yes, we saw the president when he was signing the budget. Are we trying to make something out of nothing? Well, I... I'll say that, um, like somebody once said, a philosopher King once said that Nothing good, nothing bad. Thinking make it so. Um, if you ask me, of late you observe that we've not been doing most of our national affairs with the fanfare that you used to know. And I believe it is part of uh, the sober reflection that this regime need to put in place. You recall that we have had, you know, um, one or two events rather than having it in the usual ego square. It's been carried out in the, you know, what do you call it? As a rock. Yeah, but we yeah, don't use it for the um, Well, this is the beauty of constitutional democracy. There are democracies and there are democracies. But constitutional democracy, I believe, is indeed that type of democracy that encompasses government for the people, by the people, and of the people, as it were. The budget matter is something to me, is a very, very uh, interesting uh, development in our political history, because it gives opportunity to both the parliament, the executive arm, and the uh, Nigerians at large to have a practical experience of what indeed has been you know, spread out in the ground law of the land. By that I mean the Nigerian constitution of 1999 as amended. Mm -hmm. 
The provisions of the Constitution is very clear on this matter. And I have had to say in a joking manner, but seriously, I mean, seriously, I intended and I meant every bit of what I said in the course of these, you know, um, issues relating to back forth movements, that it is, for me, an interesting development. First and foremost, I am a lawyer by training, you know, and um, I think I have sufficient uh, interest in constitutional law, even though I majored in corporate management and finance in my master's. It was an opportunity indeed to stray in practical sense what exactly the constitution has spread out for Nigerians, particularly as related to between the National Assembly and the executive arm of government. We've lived in a situation over the years because of our experience of a long time of military uh, uh, dictatorship where things have been seen that the executive arm can bring any document to the National Assembly and you should ram the throats of members. You garbage in, you garbage out, bring the envelope the way you brought it in, you expect you take that envelope away. That manner. It's not so. If constitution, like the Supreme Court once delivered, that if the constitution wanted anything to be done, it would have clearly stated so. And that we've, that's why we have plethora of judgments where it has been stated clearly that where the weddings of a statute is clear and unambiguous, what do you do? You give it its literary meanings. You do not need to go in search of spiritual meanings. So in this case, the Constitution has been clear that the executive has the responsibility to propose, I, I use the word consciously and decisively, to propose budget, budget, budgetary proposal and lay before the chamber of the, I mean, before the National Assembly. And what that simply means is you have brought your proposal, the National Assembly is the conscience of the people, representing the people. They have the right, constitutionally, to cross the T's and dot the I's mm. of whatever proposal you have made, because they, ha they are much more in tandem and in touch and have better understanding and appreciation of what indeed over and above every consideration that will make an uh, impact in the life in, of the In other words, uh, 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 what you are referring to yes. is the fact that the Constitution provides that no money of the Federation can be spent unless as approved by the National, National Assembly. Assembly. So the emphasis is on approval. Yes. I'm com I will come back to some yeah, of the... I will, I'm very happy to do... Yes, because about. if the Constitution also intended that you, your, sweet, your power mm -hmm. to, to approve yes. is all a comparison, there will probably no need to have donated part of it to the executive to make the proposal in the first place. He simply would have said the National Assembly can make a budget for, the, for the financial. You have just used the right language. I've, 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 I've just, I've just put you on notice. Donation just, means giving out of the SSS you have. I'll just put it on, put you on notice. I'll right, come back you. to it. But I just want to find out in clear and uh, precise manner whether your leaders briefed you as to what happened, what transpired at the presidential villa on Wednesday. If they did it, fine. I just want to be sure that whether they told you that, okay, the president signed, we were there when he signed, okay, the president didn't sign, he was still raising issues, we left him in annoyance, although we were later told that he signed. I just want to be sure of mm -hmm. where we are. Well, they didn't brief you on We are where we are. <laughs> where are we? <laughs> okay. Well, we have not debated it. What happened? We have not. Yes, but did, was there a report back from the leadership not to the yet. general? No, there was. Right, Let me come in there. There, there Maybe, was a report. Yeah, there was. Please clearly, the clearly, the, no. the right honorable speaker uh, in the person of um, you know uh, Tamboa didn't miss words when on Thursday that yeah. he, he That's made, the following he, day. Yeah, the, the next day, day he made a very categorical statement to yeah. the fact that you know, gentlemen, honorable members, you are aware that the president has uh, you know signed okay. the budget. Okay. But the the, the the next line of action is. Yes, as a member, I have free, you know, I, I represent a constituency of cross. So I expect that the signed budget, I should have a copy, a copy of that signed sure. budget, as it were. So, of course, this is, these are usually issues between, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure Thursday, Friday, today, it is a long time in the life of a politician. So a lot may have happened, and I'm here to go to the chambers today. So by the time we go to the chambers, we'll okay. just... As at yesterday, you, yeah. you, you didn't have a copy of the budget. As at yesterday, as I, okay. I, I, that is, I, as a person, I don't know if the leadership have, have been have, you know, so have furnished. Too, so you have too. Time. All right, Dr. Okego, let's, we are, there are some issues for us there. Thank from you. From what I have narrated mm -hmm. and from what you can see here, it will seem as if, if the president signed the budget, he did so reservedly grudgingly, pro probably, maybe after the leadership of the National Assembly had left, he says we have succeeded in persuading him that there are better options, sign, and then we'll take it off from there. Yeah. If that is so, 
that will attest to the fact that the days before that Wednesday, some key aides of the president, particularly the, those saddled with the management of the economy, the chief economic advisor, for example, Dr. Oki Dribbe or something like that, had actually addressed a press conference where he raised about five key objections to the details of the budget as passed on to Mr. President for his asset. Thank you very much, Benga. We have discussed this budget matter here. And part of what I told you is that a typical budgeting process takes about 14 steps. Part of it, the members of the House had mentioned in passing, that you need to present this budget to us early enough, okay, for us to be able to now, you know, do what they call the midterm review and all that and all that. And all these steps will now get to a point where you might even now need to now start taking it to the governor's forum, taking it to the civil society, you know, and everybody would have come on the same page. Now, but let us not even go into other long lecture. Let's get to the, what the issues are. And what I want to tell you and tell Nigerians is that what we have in Nigeria is a proposal that comes from government who puts in all their technical inputs. And a budget that comes out of the National Assembly who now do what they do on behalf of the people. What should worry us, what should worry everybody is in now reviewing this budget, does the National Assembly also have the technical depth, instruments and machineries to be able to now truly and thoroughly review this budget vis-a-vis... Mm. -vis what the executive has done. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or if you do better. Do better. Now, that is, that is one. Two, in the process of reviewing this budget on behalf of the people, did you also carry the executive mm. along? Because what it is we have right now that needs to be assented to law is not the budget of the executive. It is not Jonathan's budget. It is the budget of the National Assembly. So these key eerie issues, I mean, let's talk about, let me digress a little bit and give you one little story that will surprise you. Everybody says that our Jokuta is 98% completed. And I said to them, the 2% that is not completed, have you, do you know what it is? That that 2% could actually be, you know, the make or ma of the whole 98% that you put into place. So when you're talking about the little areas that the budget hasn't been captured, and again, you see, there's something that has come into this country that I think is a hangover of the military command and control procedure. For crying out aloud, when you are a public officer, you owe us, you know, explanations. We, everybody who is in that uh, status is being paid by monies you and I are contributing. That's why they are public servants. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot ask this person and he says, you know, I'm smiling. Ask this person, he says, I'm not the spokesman. You ask this person, he says, I'm coughing. And then we are here debating it. And then we are now asking, uh, did they assent? Did they sign? Uh, who I mean, if this is the first time that you're signing a, a, a budget in the dark. There's doubts. In the dark. There are doubts so about it as to whether you actually sign it or not. Can I please propose that probably we change the tone of this topic to say, was the budget signed? Can we be able to first and foremost get an affirmation that the budget was signed? Because the members of the House have said to you, they don't have any documents. That, that, that the man signed a paper. Could have been an agreement. It could possibly be that the reasons why they removed the press people from that meeting was for this agreement of a supplementary budget to be set to be reached. And if that agreement was signed, it is not the budget. But having said that, sir, let us also, in a, in a, in a one minute, Say that our budget captures three, three distinct elements. One is a capital component. Two is a recurrent, which is now divided further into two. What you call your emoluments, and then what you call your consumables. Until Nigerians begin to separate these three things. Because right now, tell me what the budget of the Ministry of Agriculture, if they were supposed to be buying and distributing or getting into seedling programs, will be when the rains have come. Tell me what the budget to do to the Ministry of Works if they are supposed to be using their own to start building rains when the rains have come. Tell me what it will do to the mining sector if part of it was supposed to be for explorations when the rains have come. These are the critical areas that create jobs. So why don't we begin to first and foremost ask ourselves, do we please step down these budgets and know that for this year, whatever it is we're going to be doing will be disaster in the waiting. Mm. Or what you call... Simply uh, because we are starting late. You, you have started very late. <coughs> okay. Uh, were you agreeing to say something? Yeah. Yes, I was, I was agreeing to say to... something. In that in 360, 360 federal constituencies, 
To say we don't have the technical know-how will not be correct. From the National Assembly, we've seen people become uh, governors. You'll see them into public, high public offices. We have the technical competence. We have the committees. We have the consultants. But there are certain things to that produce are, a to budget, produce a federal, a federal budget. A federal bu yes, a federal budget. Uh, what is the work of the legislature? Why do we say the budget should be presented if we don't? If we are not to make any input, like he said, to be garbage in, garbage out. So it means it is the what you are insinuating probably is the executive that have the technical know-how to do the no. No, no what, what, what I understand saying, him to be well, saying is that the budget saying, ought to be yeah. or is assumed to be the product of. A, a, a rudimentary process yeah. that had taken into account the inputs of people who are experts yeah. and who have come from their different areas of expertise yes. to put to couple the budget together. Yes, in the house we have such people, 360 people yeah. of but, eminent but, Nigerian do have people. Some of, some of them have been in federal parliament before they have been in technical. Yeah. Say, but, been but, in are you saying but that in three months, in three months, we have the power to do it and we have done it. Do we need, uh, do we need the uh, uh, technicalities to say our crude oil says, listen, Benga, our crude oil says, eh, our crude oil says in Nigeria over around $102 per barrel. And somebody is saying we should use a benchmark of $75. And we say, so let us be 80. Has he ever for without a, without so we are your argument is not is not no, superior say, example, to, the, to the argument of the executive. So for, you are the ones assuming that your argument is superior. Mm, what I'm telling you is this: it's obvious. It is obvious that for us to fund the capital project in Nigeria of what we have seen in yes. the Yes, but they are saying that the we, capital project that you are funding are not the capital projects that they have put there, but projects that you decided to introduce on your own in the name of. Constituency projects. Anyway, those are some of the issues. <laughs> those are some of the issues. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Benga, uh, quick, quick, quickly, uh, before yeah. you, let me say the, that. The, is, my that, real worry is no, before the, your the, before the worry. That you that yes. is, which is that budgetary thing is not a garbage in, garbage out thing. Absolutely yeah. so. And the question yeah. I asked you then is mm. actually what I asked you, want you to answer why, for, why which is that mm. to what extent does the power of the legislator to turn around the proposals? Is he, is he uh, such an elastic power that there's no limit to it? Does he allow you to distort the budget in the way that the executive cannot even recognize his imprint in it? Well, with due respect, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid you've not, you've not bought into the constructive blackmail. I, I, I choose the word constructive blackmail because when I hear people talk about the legislature putting in, you know, um, you know uh, so much, but like you just said, distorting, yeah. it's a deliberate attempt to, you know, uh, mislead the Nigerian public, uh, maybe precisely to give uh, what looks like uh, a good reason, but no true reason. That's what they call rationalization of ideas. To be candid, this is not a parliamentary democracy where you say every member of the cabinet is first and foremost a member of the parliament. It's not. This is presidential democracy. So we must suppress these two. Talking about, I have heard some in the executive say that one reason why they are unable to implement sometimes, yes. if not most times, is that the project that we are injected into the uh, budget, we are, there, there were no feasibility studies. Then I take you on a straight line, on a straight journey. Let's just take a straight ride. Ninety percent, by the grace of God, I have been chairman of you know uh, committee on power since midway sixth assembly to date, and I can tell you without fear of the, of, 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 of any of any fine or contradiction that sixty percent of the members of the of the house or national assembly for that matter will want their project in the power sector as much as possible. And I will tell you now that 80% of this project are issues related to, I mean, transformers. Transformer. You understand me? Put like, you know, if a 300 kVA, 500 kVA, or it may be, for instance, in the uh, housing, uh, a classroom block, or in some other cases, borehole. It's only very few percent. I mean, I, I've not had a budget that have had 3% or 5% of the input of members going as far as talking about uh, injection of substations. Mm. The moral question I want you to ask, I want to ask you there, what feasibility studies do you need in, in, in putting a transformer somewhere? What feasibility study do you need that does not exist in a classroom block? What feasibility study do you need in hand pump? 
That is phase one. Phase two, I have heard some careless people who, I mean, in quotes, just trying to blackmail the National Assembly and mislead the general public, saying that the total budget, I mean, projects that the National Assembly has put in is about 4,000. And I'll give you straight away. There was an understanding between the National Assembly and the executive arm where the, the I want you to know, 100, 100 billion era was given to the National Assembly constituency project under the MDGs, which was shared among members. Some members, depending on the number of members representing a particular state, got, I mean, it, 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 that depends on what you get. The, the fewer you are from a particular uh, state, if it's given on state or geopolitical zone, the higher the amount that will get to each member. But I'll give you an instance. Assume a member that has 80 million there as its own constituency you know, project sum from that buck money that was agreed between the executive and the legislature. You choose to put hand pump, for instance, in some part of the north, with one million naira, you can actually sink a borehole. In some part, you can, with two million naira, you can sink a borehole. So if a member chooses to put his 50 million naira into boreholes of one million, that's already 50, 50, 50, that's, that's already 50 projects. So if you have 20 of such members, 50 times 20, what does it give you? It gives you 1,000. Now, what is the feasibility study that you need to carry out in those projects that will now make it impossible for the executive to execute? But let's even say, for the purpose of academic debate or argument, let's say, for instance, it is true. Let's assume, for the, just as, for the purpose of assumption, it is true. What is the percentage of the input of National Assembly into the total budget? I say with all sense of responsibility, it's less than 5%. Yes. Are we saying that the, the level of implementation we are saying that in the last three, four years that we have been having 90%? Implementation? implementation. Let, let me assume that they were unable to implement the ones that we are put in by the National Assembly. So give that 5% away, then that means we'll be talking about 95% budget you know, uh, implementation. But well, that has not been the case. Benga, let me tell you, without, you know, this is our country. We've got no other one, like, like it's often said. We must be prepared to cost pay the space, is paid when it will make sense. And that is why I'm even, it's, like I said, when we had a joint meeting of some ministers and you know, uh, committee members whose committee we are said to have, you know, I told them very clearly that there's one aspect of mercy that nobody wants to visit. Because by the time you have visited, visited that, that discipline, then you are a dead person, cadavers. And that is what you call pathologist. So for, 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 for crying out there, I told them that as far as I'm concerned, reasonably, that discussing 2013 budgets about a month ago to me was post-mortem. Hmm. Post-mortem in the sense that let me, let me in the sense that the House, the National Assembly as it were, have done that that is required by it, I mean by law, hmm. to so do. So, all right. Now, I'll provoke you with, by telling you some of the things that, yes. so that I've heard from some key aides of the President, those who are involved in the budgeting process. Yeah. I will tell you some of the things they are saying against you. Mm -hmm probably to provoke an answer from you. But first of all, let me ask you. The constituency project, so, how is it disbursed? Is it added to the National Assembly budget? Or it is the executive that, that oversees it? It is given to the, the Because the allegation is that it is given to the National Assembly. Yes. Uh -huh. so, given, so, so in addition to the it's, word of... It's given to, listen, listen the way it's, it's done. Yes. You give the rough figure. Okay. This is it. It's hypothetical. And for, for the purpose of clarity, let me say once again here that it is on cash. It is not money, no money, because many Nigerians have been misled to believe that this money is given to members of national yes, assembly. Yes, but it is as it's to be part of the vote of the national of, assembly. Of the vote, no, the total vote. No, of, of the, the vote, of, total of, vote of, of the budget. Of the budget. Not yes, but when it comes to implementation, yes. how does it happen? Is it the executive? It's that still the executive. It's still the executive. Those projects. Yes. The this, they are the ones that this led the, 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 the truth is that you know when you want to hang a dog, the first thing you do is to give it a bad name. They, they select the contractors yes. and all of, of course. that. Yes. You know, you know, sorry, sorry. Please let, let's get in here <laughs> because you see, when you are talking about national planning and national development, yes, you need to. Need to have these it, are part of you, the things yeah, that I yes. that I want to uh, look to. Maybe when okay. I maybe okay. when I get to okay. you, okay. you will be able to okay. put okay. all those okay. other issues in the mix. Right. Uh, now the problem here is that here you have an executive that has proposed like. Or we had as I said about four thousand projects. Mm. These are projects that probably that is have their own position. No? It's yes, not, it's not yes. Mm. Projects that have national outlook. Mm. You yeah. talk about a road linking so many communities together, mm. a road linking so many states together, a project that imparts on two, three states at a time, mm. 
and not a project that affects maybe Gwega's community alone yeah. or Gwega Street in a community yeah. as you members of the National Assembly are proposing. Yeah. The, some of the allegations against you as regards this 2020 budget are that you have taken money from such projects that have national outlook. According to the federal government, mm -hmm. maybe, a, maybe a project like Abuja, Loko, Abuja, Gogolada, Abaji, Lokoja Road, which is a national strategic road. Yeah. Probably the executive had proposed that this year we want to spend 10 billion naira on this road. In, in, in trying to create your constituency projects and find a means of funding it, you have taken part of the money made for that road, you have put it in a constituency project. You take from maybe another money made for another big project somewhere, you put it in a constituency project. That's how you were able to make allowance for the funding of the constituency project that the executive didn't provide for. This uh, that's a problem that's not because at the end of the day, Abuja Lokoja Road will not be completed because you have reduced no. the funding. No, so no, 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 listen, if you have made your submission, let me just tell you. Yeah, that's not true. We will get to you. It's not true. No, let me. Absolutely wrong. Yeah, can we? Come on, let me. Sorry, I mean, I tell you something. Why? Why? I I will tell you something. I will give you. I will give you the floor shortly. You know why I say it's not true? It's not just that it's not true. Like I said, constructive blackmail, mischievous, intended to reduce. The, if you like, uh, the, uh, for, for want of the, of, the, of the best language now, to bring down the positions of members of National Assembly. i give you an example. I'm, I'm chairman of you know, Committee on Power, like you said. We had, when I was invited, there was, there was a project. They said 2.5 billion was removed. Let me give you a, a clinical example. 2.5 billion, yeah, I stand to, I own up to it because at the committee level, we have three the projects. These projects, what, how much was, was it funded this year, in 2013? 7.5 billion. This same project came into the budget, national budget in 2011. After, the due, after due feasibility studies were carried out, it was appropriated, what amount? 1.7 billion. Between last year and this year's budget, you have a difference of 5 billion. I mean, from 1.7 to 7.5 billion. And I can tell you, Benga, that I have not seen the history of power sector in this country where a particular project was funded to the, tune of, of, to the tune of seven billion, a, one project. Now, the logic was very simple. First and foremost, we could not understand the rationale behind moving, behind moving for 1.7 billion the previous year, as proposed by the executive, to the same government, to 7.5 billion this year, with the same components remaining intact and the same. We moved 2.5 billion from that project to fund other critical national pro project of national interest. Knowing fully, aware, project. knowing fully aware that even if you leave that 7.5 billion in, that, in the budget of 2013, and I challenge them, I challenge anybody to say by the end of this uh, budgetary year, let anybody come and show me how far they would have um, um, on that project that uh, 7.5 billion would have been expended. Mm -hmm. So leaving 5 billion for that project to me still makes a lot of sense if all things are equal, given the fact that. I do not even understand. Dr. Okay, for, for, for us, ordinary yeah. Nigerians, yeah. a lot of things are coming up now. Yeah. Yes, I think, I think, yeah. it's, I think yeah. it's, please. No, 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 let, let, I'll get to well, you. Let me just, you uh, know we... Benga, Benga, let me ask this rhetorical I told you I was going to provoke you yes. with what I... I, I know. know, yes. Uh -huh. If they say so, it's unfortunate. You know why? Let us ask ourselves, how do we get to where we are? Was constituency project there in 1966? Was it there? But if you look at history of implementation of budgets... Somewhere along the line, the issue of constituency project came in. That these people that are close, very close to the people, when budget is made and only 30% is implemented at the end of the year, or 40% at the end of the year, and the other one goes, he said, go back to the place, whether it go back to uh, the, 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 treasury. The, the, the treasury or not, it's another issue. But assuming it goes there, is that useful to the people? But the, the, that was along the line now, the issue of constituency project now comes in. And to make it clear to, the, to Nigerians and the, 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 the public, it is not the National Assembly members that implement these things. The constituency, the constituency project. project. It is still the executive. Mm -hmm. the executive but we take credit that. for it. Then we we yeah, take we, credit for it. That you facilitated credit, it. Yes, we facilitated it because if... If we are 360 people from the whole area. Like you said, if it is borehole, they will say you should put it and you put it. Yes, but it's the executive that uh, we see about the contract and, uh, and uh, this. Uh, but that will help in the implementation because we will have to put it 
So okay. make sure that it is done and okay. it's done on the hour of the paper. Uh, okay. So Co it was not the part I'm making that it was not there before, but development in our history shows that it should be there. So what we should do is to cooperate because everything that is done is for Nigeria a, a benefit, not to blackmail each other. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, Thank you, Dr. Okego, yeah. when the executive had the legislation file, the Nigerians are happy because each side then tell us things ordinarily that we are not aware of. Honorable, uh, uh, we just made a statement now, which struck, struck, struck me, which is that if a project was budgeted for in 2011 for 1.7 billion naira, and this year you are proposing uh, 7 point right. something billion for it, first of all, my own thinking would be that. That 1.7 that was what budgeted in 2011, was mm -hmm. it for full and final completion of that project? If yes, why was the project not completed? To the extent that you now have to budget uh, uh, almost five times mm -hmm. what was originally budgeted now. These are the leakages in the system. And uh, the way Nigerians co quickly come to conclusion, if you are on Facebook, you are very active on Facebook and all of that, social media, is that both sides are busy piling up money for campaigns, for elections and all of that. You know, you know, you know, Benga, let's be able to look at Nigeria a little holistically and look at these issues in contention. The 5.7 billion that Honorable had spoken about would have been totally and completely unnecessary if there was proper time for oversight functions. Let us take that as a given. The House wouldn't have needed to have waited for the budget to have been passed. Like I said to you, in those steps of not preparing that budget, the 14 steps. it would have been clearly settled. That is one. Two, in also doing what you call constituents projects that are inconsequential and not heavily funded, you also now look at the implications in your overall national infrastructure. If you are talking about your, your power lines, he is the chairman of a power. Now, what the question I'd like to ask is, have they been able to now look at the whole power infrastructure, the way we are transmitting from our megawatts to our kilowatts to our substations to our transformers? This is where you have the issues. And one transformer in the wrong place, one transformer in the wrong place can actually now create a lot of upsets in the whole grid. Now, if you're going to now do this transformer thing to put it inside the school, has it been captured in your national you know, infrastructure plan? Mm. Is there an integrated program with the boreholes you're digging to now make certain that by the time, because you're taking your boreholes from your underground water source, have there been any investigations on the availability of that groundwater source? Because it is not everywhere you put for borehole that you get borehole. This is where these feasibilities that everybody is talking about comes in. I think what I take out from Honorable is that there was a meeting, an agreement between the executive and the legislator to say, okay, fine, let's now have a meeting road. Eh, you people are not doing well. Give us something we can do to also showcase that we didn't come to Abuja to be looking at bridges. Now, is this proper? Probably because of the kind of fire brigade approach that we're approaching and doing things in Nigeria, the answer is yes. But if you're thinking a budget through, the obvious answer is no. What I think we need as ordinary Nigerians is to begin to first and foremost look at these transformers that first... Let's talk about transformers for, for crying out loud. Do we have... The, how many Nigerians know that Ajokuta has the capacity to repair transformers? That the engineering workshop in Ajokuta is fully completed and can start fixing transformers? Now, I don't know, he is the chairman of power, probably he would have done oversight functions. How many of our transformers are blown up? And how many have we been able to repair in-house? These are the questions. If you don't begin to create these things that can create jobs for people, how are you going to be, you know, sustaining the system? Mm -hmm. For us, as other Nigerians, me and you, Benga, what we are interested is not the fight between the executive and the legislator. What we are interested in is how the utterances and this fight translates to me and you coming to Igwe, Igwe Square to watch our president yeah. and not peeping at him inside the, the villa. And they say, we're not talking about a, a, a symbolic democracy. <laughs> you know. but, but my worry really is the interest of the average Nigeria in all of this. Because if I use your example, something is wrong with our budgeting process. Because even the constituency projects that you, have, that you think you are putting are you, because we're in the position to push through, it may also go wrong. For example, if I, there were constituency projects last year, weren't they? How many of it, for example, the constituency projects that you fought for in your community, how many of it were executed? Well, I don't know where you're coming from and where you want to land. I'm coming from here. I'm I not coming from the side of the executive. If, like they say, I'm there. if you take off in an aircraft on a wrong, on a wrong footing, the chances are that you crash land. Mm. Are you not suggesting that simply because this project were suggested 
from the legislative angle that has made the project a wrong project, unnecessary project? Are you saying so? Are you suggesting that because they've came, they, they are projects that have been suggested by the, uh, by the, uh, from, the, from, the, from, the from the legislature, that is the reason why it should not be funded? Okay, keep those projects aside. I have said, let's assume that, okay, the project we have been putting, they are irresponsible projects. I'm, I said the total does not amount to 5%. Have we, not, have, we, have we executed 95% project in this country in a year? So we should look at these things. Yes. And I'm not by saying December. that in December any case every... that the project that we are putting by members or by National Assembly are irresponsible or useless. Indeed, they are... Have we found a sufficient solution to that? No, let's so resolve it. I'm going to solution solution resolve, can we resolve this? So implementation of budget? No. The solution is... You, you the don't have, a, you of don't have any solution the of other than... The executive... Other than doing that, that is right. Other than not, you know, uh, 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 engaging yourself in constructive blackmail. Other than failure to do certain things just because you want to show, oh, it came from that angle, it is useless. No. Okay. All right. Maybe we'll the, just... the president, would you respect one minute? The other day, the president was going one to minute? Lagos. No. One second. He went to Lagos and went to the police barrack and saw police barrack. Those are the things we, as a president of the people, we see every day. Every day. And we say it. And the only the reasons why we insist on one or two things being That's done in one location. I would have expected that with that presidential visit, something to have drastic would have happened to that in Yeah. I tell you nothing so, not is so, uh, the, the students are still sharing one fish head. They still, <laughs> they still go to, they still cross the road to uh, customs, to customs institute or whatever. The, the Kedja. So when a member, when a member from that constituency insists that project that we need a police, uh, I mean, uh, what you call sanitary uh, something in that state, you say it's uh, it's busy body.